Is the XMID Pro 2 Plus the best tent on the market? Well, it depends who you are. And there's a good chance it actually could be for you since you've ended up on this tiny ch YouTube channel. You're in the demographic of people it's for. Unless you're my grandma. Hi Nan, how's it going? Today, let's have a look at the XMID Pro 2 Plus and I guess a few thoughts for this thing. It's a very premium tent and it comes with a premium price tag, but it isn't perfect. And I have some complaints about it. So let's have a look at that. Let's talk about what my wants and needs were when I was looking at buying the XMED Pro 2 Plus. Now, with all that being said, you've probably seen a few XMED videos already. So I'm gonna skip over some of the stuff you already know about and just talk about what my ownership experience has been with the XMED. And I'm gonna talk about some of the areas I think we were a little bit underperforming with the tent because it was pretty pricey, but I'm gonna run off a few specs right away. So the XMED Pro 2 Plus was 558 grams on my scale and it costs a fair bit of money. It was roughly $1,250 Canadian after taxes and ship to my front door in British Columbia. So yeah, we have a lot of taxes here and exchange rate's not great. So just keep that in mind. It's a very expensive tent. Now, what was I looking for out of the tent? Way back last fall, I was planning a trip down to New Zealand with my girlfriend Paige. We wanted a one lightweight tent that could fit two 25 inch wide sleeping pads and wasn't gonna be really bulky and take up a lot of space because we only had two backpacks to live out of for a few months down in New Zealand. Lo and behold, Dan announced the XMED Pro 2 Plus, and that seemed like the perfect tent for us, minus the cost. Now, I was wanting a tent that was gonna be storm-worthy, lightweight, and spacious for two people. Somewhere you could sit up and change on the inside of the tent, not worry about it, keep you dry, and all those good things. I wanted a trek and pull tent to save on the space, like I was saying, and I don't know, I like ultralight gear, so I wanted an ultralight tent. <laughs> when I first got the XMED, it was in late November of last year, and I set up in my backyard just to see how it was, and I got a really nice pitch out of it. So fast forward six weeks, we were in New Zealand, buying a van, traveling to the continent, all the other fun stuff that happens during that, and we were on a trail for a multi-day hike. Unfortunately, in that time period, I'd forgotten how to set up the tent, and it's not very intuitive to set it up. One of the nights we were on the beach, and I didn't have a very good pitch for it, and it was very stormy out. This tent was flapping around, hitting us in phase, water was spraying in. It just was not a good time. Luckily, later, the next day on that trip, I was able to get service and we were able to set it up. It's surprisingly easy to set up once you know how to do it, but it's not intuitive. So just make sure you know how to set it up. Now I'm probably just a little shy of 100 pitches with the tent and it still requires a little bit of finessing with it to get it right. It could take quite a while. Tonight, I couldn't even stake it out because the ground's pretty hard, and so I just used the guidelines to loop around sticks and anchor it down with rocks, and that's why I don't have a very good pitch behind me, just because of how it goes sometimes with that. Give you a real world example of this. <laughs> One thing I don't hear people talk about online is that the tent needs a lot of tension on it to be able to get a, get a nice tight pitch. You need very grippy ground and be able to get your tent stakes in nice and deep to be able to pull it tight. If you don't have it tight enough, you're not able to extend your tracking poles to an appropriate height and put tension throughout the tent. One of the selling features of the XBED is that you only need four stakes to be able to pitch it. And that's how I have it set up, just to show you guys what it's like with only four stakes. Now, while I'm out backpacking, I typically use six stakes and I stake out the vestibule so that it's not flopping around. As you can see, it's all loosey-goosey. So I definitely recommend having it the six stakes with you to keep it nice and tight. When you get a hang of setting up the tent, everything's quite easy and straightforward to do. Whoa. Once you get a hang of setting up the tent, it's quite, it's very quick to do and I prefer setting it, it up over a freestanding tent. But once you figure out how to set up the X-Men and you do it a few times, memorize the video, it's quite easy to do. You'll learn how to make your adjustments as you need to go if you're on very uneven ground. Let's jump into the size of the tent because that's one of the big things. That's the big selling things with this tent is this interior living space. So you can see there's ample so head space in here. There's, I am 6'5", like I said, and there is a ton of room in here. I can sit up and change. I'm sitting on an angle at the moment, but if someone else was sit here, they their heads would be a little bit closer to the side. Yeah, you can hear it flapping around. Dyneema is quite noisy, so we'll see how that is while filming in here. Uh, now remember, this is what it's gonna be like when you're in here trying to sleep during the night. I'm gonna recommend earplugs while you sleep in here if it's ever windy. <laughs> so what I was looking for was a pad that was long enough for me where I wasn't gonna be rubbing my feet during one of the sides of it during the night so I don't have to worry about the condensation build up on the tent. Plus, I wanna be able to fit my girlfriend in here with me as well so we have room where we're both not hitting the walls of the tent and have to worry about all the moisture that accumulates because of that. So being able to fit two 25 inch wide pads can make it a little bit more challenging to find one. So realistically, we were looking at a three person tent and unfortunately there isn't many Dyneema tents that are actually three person. So with all that being said, once the XMED Pro 2 Plus was announced, I was really excited. Because like, I kept hearing about the regular XMED Pro 2 wasn't big enough to fit two 25 inch wide pads. They are both rectangular, and so you wouldn't have to sleep head to toe. Now, even with the tent being wide enough though, what I find that happens, the outside wall for one the person is gonna be right in their face. Now, it's not as bad as it was with the XMED Pro 2, 
but with the Pro 2 Plus, there's a little bit more room, but that still is a bit of an issue. And if you're slightly claustrophobic, having that tent fabric right in your face in the middle of the night can be annoying. And if the, your tent isn't staked out correctly and the wind's whipping around like this, you'll start slapping you in the face if you're that person with the tent. Me being a long feller, I'm able to fit in here though with someone else in here and I don't have to sleep on an angle like I do in most two person or one person tents. So I was wearing my Watson tent. Well, I was headed to New Zealand and New Zealand's known for its crazy weather down there. So I wanted something that was storm worthy. The expo did awesome in horrible weather. One of our nights in New Zealand, we were in Mount Cook National Park and we had wind gusts up to 50 kilometers per hour. And that's no joke in a tent that some people refer to as a toilet paper tent. <laughs> <laughs> I also submit, mentioned that night while we had set up, it was on a very hilly kind of ground area and the way how the tent was, it kind of funneled under so the wind would blow underneath straight up into you. So if you have a divot by your head, be careful with that because it'll act like a wind funnel with the way how the vestibules are shaped. And Paige had a really cold night from that. <laughs> I'm laughing, but if she was here right now, she wouldn't be. During that night, we used eight stakes to set up the tent. Not using the guidelines, just the ones around the perimeter. Tent definitely checks off the box for being storm worthy. So with this being an ultralight tent, you think it would be lacking features, but it actually has quite a few features to it for what it is. Having the tent set up on this angle here allows it to travel significantly more into your living space. It's very ingenious how you can see everything's built out together. And <laughs> if you look at it, it's kind of confusing at first, but once you set it up, everything makes sense. So besides the overall design of the tent, which you could argue is a feature of it itself, be able to enable to have as much room as it has on the inside compared to other tents. The tent has two vents on it that are attached with a, a little carbon fiber pole that you're able to adjust in and outward, so you're able to add some ventilation to them. It's better than nothing, but if it's a humid night, you're gonna build up a lot of condensation on it. Tent is only a single wall tent, so that being said, we've talked with the vents, moisture management is a bit of a difficult thing to deal with while you're in the tent. You have to watch for a condensation buildup, but with the way how the bath tabs are designed, all the condensation on the wall of the tent should accumulate and start working its way down to the bottom and it shouldn't hit you. Shouldn't, keyword. Some of it does hit you in my personal experience. Also with the tent, it has very large vestibules. With the large vestibules, it allows you to store things such as your backpack, your camp chair, and what other things you want to store inside of there? The vestibules have a nice number three YYK zipper. You're able to pull it up with one hand easily. With it being a water tight zipper, it's pretty easy to work. I find no my experience. And then with the vestibule, if you're able to, if you want to roll it back during the middle of the night to have some extra ventilation in there, it has nice magnet straps that you're able to use to tie it back. There are these cool Dyneva little strips that come out with magnets sewed into it. I think it's a pretty cool design for it. I like it a lot better than your traditional toggle strap. Of all Durst Intents in the fall of 2023, you have the option now of choosing a Dyneema floor versus a nylon floor. The Dyneema floor has a thinner layer on the top and a thicker mylar layer on the bottom to reinforce it to give it extra strength. I went with the Dyneema floor because I wanted the quick dry abilities with it. I didn't want to have to deal with a saturated floor, carry the extra water weight while I'm on my hikes. Now the thing with the tent is all the different stakeout points that we have with it. There's numerous stakeout points throughout the whole tent that help increase it. I had the tent out in some very heavy rainfall. In rain, that would be equivalent to an atmospheric river that we have out here, which is another Tuesday night in New Zealand, wet west coast. With this being a Dyneva tent, when it gets wet, it's very easy to quickly shake off and dry. It doesn't retain onto water like a normal nylon tent would. This isn't just for the X-Men, this is all for like half ounce Dyneva tents, is the transparency of it. If it's a concern for you, it's very visible. Let's have a look on the inside. Wave my left hand, wave my right hand, even both my hands sitting in about the middle of the tent. How well can you guys see me? And now my face is right next to it, oh, pressed against it. This is with basically straight on backlighting on a low angle. The sun's about to set, so this is about as worse as it's gonna get. I really enjoyed the side pockets inside the tent too. They're very big. I can fit a lot of goodies inside of them. I tossed my ditty bag, my flashlight, and a bunch of other junk. I probably put way too many things in there, but it seems to hold up fine. One thing I want to speak on too is durability. The tent has not been the most durable, not in the ways that you would expect either. And one of the vestibules, a little pinhole has showed up and in a couple spots, no seam has ripped. One of the little poles that keeps the bathtub, gives the bathtub its shape is poking right through. One of the guidelines actually came undone today while I was setting up the tent for this video. One thing too, the stuff sack is not very tough. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it's starting to rip all down through the seam here. 
One thing I want to talk about is the zippers for the no -seum. They can get stuck if there's a bit of moisture built up in the tent. What happened to me is that the zippers were basically fused together and I couldn't get it loose. The tent was sitting wet inside the stuff sack for a couple of days and then when I went to take the tent out, they seemed to corroded and they wouldn't open up. It took quite a bit of force and I was scared I was gonna rip it, but just be mindful of that. The zippers aren't fully corrosion resistant. So if you get a bit of condensation with the tent, make sure you dry it out. Even if it's gonna be just for a couple of days, sometimes it happens while you're out backpacking and traveling. A lot of this has to do with the materials and with it being ultra light. I am very hard on my gear though, that being said. I thought the areas with it were gonna be, the problem was gonna be the bathtub floor since it's made of a very lightweight Dyneema and Dyneema is not very good at puncture resistance, but that's been fine actually. It's just been other areas. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of lightweight backpacking tents. They aren't forever products. That's one thing that a lot of people forget. They're kind of see as, as lightweight gear is supposed to be disposable. It's not gonna be your 10 year backpacking gear. What are my final thoughts on the Axman Pro 2 Plus? For it being a big mouthful, it's a big tent. So I think it's gonna be nice for two people if you're hiking together and you guys wanna shave weight overall. The one person that's carrying the tent can give a roughly half a pound to the other person to even out your guys' backpacking weight and then everyone's gonna be lighter overall. I want a tent that's storm worthy and setting up a tent isn't a big issue for you, then this is gonna be a great tent for you. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Got some winter camping videos coming up. I'm really excited for that. If you enjoyed this review, I might have another one over here that you might like. YouTube will recommend it for you, one of these ones, on one of these sides. See ya.